Okay, good afternoon. Welcome to the exit tier three with ATSI or tier one support meeting. I might be stopping along the way to let people in. Okay, so uh, most of you know who I am, but if you don't, my name is Monique Sullivan and I'm the Continuous School Improvement Coordinator. And I work on the ESCA team, but I also work with the assessment team under the Maine's model of Maine's model of school support, which falls under the several sections of ESSA statute, but specifically sections 111 and 1003. 111 is the state plan or the school improvement piece, and then section 1003 is the money that uh, goes to those schools that um, have been identified for tier three uh, or, eight or CSI support. So um, we do include mission and the vision and the strategic priorities of the Department of Education. And this is the driving force between all the work that we do at the department and all of the interactions we have with um, schools and educators uh, across the state. So today's objectives are to understand the requirements for tier three exit plans and tier one ATSI school improvement plans, to understand timelines for using remaining FY23 and FY24 SIG funds, prepare for monitoring and performance reporting for FY23 and FY24 SIG funds, and then continue implementing effective evidence-based practices um, as tier one identified schools. And I know I've mentioned this before, but I do alternate back and forth between um, using the, the terms tier and what's actually written in statute. So tier one is actually ATSI in the statute, it's additional targeted support and improvement. Uh, tier two is actually targeted support and improvement in the statute and then Comprehend, uh, CSI, which is tier three, is comprehensive support and improvement. So I, a lot of times I go back and forth between um, the different uh, tiers and the what's written in statute. So first, I just want to say congratulations. Uh, I want to take a moment to take uh, congratulate everyone. Your school um, was able to continue with their, with their school improvement journey, and they were able to exit uh, tier three, um, exit or exit tier three status by increasing the academic achievement of your students. So congratulate, I hope you were taking a few minutes to con congratulate yourself and your school. So once you've done that, um, you wanna take, after you've taken some time to celebrate with your school, now's the time to start working on your school's tier three exit plan and to plan the next steps on your school's continuous school improvement journey as a school identified for tier one ATSI supports. So the next couple of slides, I'm just kind of going to give a very basic overview of the tier three exit criteria. Um, try to put it as basic terms as possible. So the first slide, it just real basically, um, and we're calling this cohort one. So tier three schools, these are schools that were identified for tier three supports in FY 2018 and 2019. And for a variety of reasons, including COVID and changing the assessment, and then having the US Department of Education telling us to do certain things, um, schools were not eligible to exit um, until FY23-24 this year. Um, and so it kind of threw the cycle off a little bit. So to be able to exit, you have to have two consecutive years of not meeting the tier three identification criteria. Uh, I put a little asterisk next to the FY22-23 because technically some of you might have been able, well, actually you guys, your schools would have been able to exit tier three status, but the feds last year said, no, you can't exit anyone. And so these schools were given the identification of unable to exit. Now move forward to FY23-24, you are able to exit. And so there are a couple of options for exiting. You could uh, you could uh, exit with no support, or you could exit with ATSI or Tier One support. And that's what this meeting is for: is for schools that were able to exit Tier Three support, but 
at least one student group is still experiencing challenges or has emerging, emerging us across all indicators, and therefore um, it renders you into tier one status or a TSI, and that status will be for three years. And then the next opportunity to, um, to exit tier one status will be in the fall of 2027. There's another option of no, but you guys don't have to worry about that status because you were able to exit tier three. The next is just a basic kind of understanding of our cycle. And again, some of these cycles have gotten a little thrown off because of um, COVID and because of changing the assessment and then having an amendment and then having to wait for the uh, US Department of Education to approve that amendment. So, but basically Maine's model of school support is run every year, um, but identifications are only made um, every few years. So, but identifications are made every three years for tier two, which is TSI, and tier three, which is CSI, and then every six years for tier one, which is ATSI. So the next cycle will be the fall of 2027, where um, schools will either exit or they may convert into another status. Um, that being said, there are some schools that depending on their school's eligibility to exit status, they may actually exit or convert to a different status on an off cycle. That doesn't apply to any of you because you guys are right on cycle. So the next time you'll be able to exit a status or go or convert to another status will be in the fall of 2027. That this is that would be what I was talking about. This is if you had a no status, then you would be into this last um, um, kind of bullet here. But you don't have to worry about that because you've exited tier three. So the next slides are just going to talk about um, kind of breaking down the pieces of the tier three exit plan. Um, when take that um, when schools receive their notification of the tier three exit. Um, with support, tier one supports, there was a tier three exit template that was attached in the email notification. And as the template says or states, it's really to help ensure that schools don't regress back into an identified state. So for example, you're exiting into tier one and in three years, if you are still tier one, you're gonna, you're gonna become tier three again. So we wanna prevent that from happening. So um, just gonna go through this real quickly. There, this is a broken down pieces or parts of the template. And I tried to make it as simple as possible. So there might be some things that might not necessarily make sense and we can talk about that. But the due date for this is June 12th. And part of that is because we wanna make sure that we have time to, if there's any questions or clarifications that are needed, we have time to do that before June 30th. Um, this completed uh, exit template or exit plan template will be sent to me via my email. And then we're asking that it only be sent as a Microsoft Word or PDF. We're really not supposed to be doing anything with Google Docs at the department. Um, one of it is because this is documentation and we do keep all this information and Google Docs is just not um, considered to be a form of documentation for the state. Um, and then, like I said, to the purpose of this is to ensure that schools don't regress back into a tier three status um, or they go into tier two status. And this need the failure to complete this um, this template could result in not being able to, to use any of your funds until uh, after the fiscal year of June 30th, when that's the, when the state fiscal year ends is on June 30th. Um, the rest of this is just different parts. Did want to point out that no cost for these funds can happen after 9-30-2024. And coaching support will end um, after 6-30-2024. The next part is just put your school information in there. And then the next part, which is kind of where the meat is of this template, and I tried to annotate it. It might be a little over annotated, but I was trying to keep it all on one page. So this piece is basically part 2A and part 2B. It's the same piece. I just, you'll have to do it for FY23 and FY24. It's broken up as separate charts in the template. 
And the first thing you want to do is check your, you want to go in and just enter your award amount in here. Um, and you'll do this for FY23 and for FY24 and different parts of it. We had talked about, or I presented back in April um, at the tier three principals meeting, how to go in and see how much money has been reimbursed uh, up to this point. Now, when we were thinking about this, we said 430, but I can tell you about a conversation that I had with a school earlier this morning. So this date could change potentially. So you wanna go in and check grants for me, invoicing or with your business manager or with both and figure out how much money has already been received by the school or the SAU. And then the next uh, piece is to amount remaining um, as a 430. And then you wanna keep, do you wanna keep using your funds between 7-1 of 2024 and 930 of 2024? Now I put this out there, I know people don't like to talk about this, but if you're done at this point and you don't wanna spend any more of your money, you don't have to. Um, you can say, nope, we're not gonna have any more obligations. We're done, 6.30, we'll have no more obligations. And we can put no, you could put no down and that's okay. So I just wanna come back to the 4.30 piece here. So when we did this, we were thinking 4.30 because we thought we were gonna be able to, we wanted to have a better idea of that. Um, and we didn't know if schools were gonna have all their invoicing done um, by then, but, and the form is due on 6.12. But would, but if, for example, you know that as a six by 630, you know what obligations you'll have, you'll know what funds you've, you've, um, you've expended. So you could change this to 630. It shouldn't be any later than 630, June 30th, when I say 630, not the time, but June 30th. Um, but do your best bet to figure out how much money you have left, how much you have remaining, and how much money you want to spend in July August and September. If you put no down here, you don't plan on using any of those funds after 630, then you can come down here to the, the last part of this um, chart and you can say, does the school anticipate not using all the remaining funds? So if you think at by 630, you're gonna have used all your money and you're not gonna have any money left and that's for FY23 and for FY24, you can say, nope, we're not gonna have any remaining funds. Um, but if you say no, if you say, yeah, I don't think, I think we're going to have some money left over and you wouldn't, and you want to give that money, like release that money back to the department, you would just put your amount here in this, um, this little cell here, box here. Now, when I say give it back to the department, it's not like we're going to do anything, just whatever we want with it. What happens is it gets reallocated and we reallocate it to other ESCA programming like um, Title I Summer School. We do use SIG money that's not used um, by schools. We'll reallocate it um, and give it out for Title I summer school. So that's an option. But if you come back up here and you're like, no, we're going to use our money between 7 1 and 9 30, then you would put yes. And then you come down to this middle part of here and you would just briefly describe the activity um, and how it's connected to your SIG application doesn't have to be really long and drawn out. It can be something as simple as what I wrote here as an example. We're going to attend the annual summit, PD on implementing tier one universal instructional strategies. Um, and this is an area identified in our CNA or school-wide plan. You would come over to uh, the cost. And you, when I say you want to include all your costs in here, like if you're going to send six people to the annual summit, you would add up all your costs, registration, fees, travel, all that. And then you'd put a dollar amount in this box here. And then documentation. What you'll write here is just the proof that you're using to get those costs. Um, you're not gonna, um, you won't have to submit any of that to us through this exit plan. You'll just submit the exit plan to me. But this is just um, kind of a little bit of a guide. So for example, if, you get monitored, you can say, oh, can you show, you know, you have the registration, you might be asked for that, or you might be asked to show an agenda, or you might be asked to show um, a sign-in sheet or something that shows that you actually did participate in that. And then the SIG application, this is an assumption that it's aligned, but we just wanna ensure that whatever activity you have here, that it does align to your SIG application. And that could be your FY23 or your FY24. 
If you say no, then you're going to need to go back and um, revise your SIG applications, depending on which one you're going to use, FY23 or FY24, to make sure that whatever you have listed here is also in your SIG application. And then, when, oops, and then when you're done, you just want to add up that column and put your total here. We really want to get an idea of how much money um, is going to be um, expended over the summer or obligated over the summer, and then how much money will be um, will be left over that we can reallocate for other ESEA programming. And another piece is we really want people to invoice for these funds, get those reimbursements. We don't want anyone waiting until 6.15 and, and scrambling trying to get all these funds obligated and budgeted um, and unreimbursed. And we also don't want to wait until 9.15 and people are trying to figure out how they're going to spend their money, we want all that planned out by 612. Now we know there's gonna be changes and updates and like that, but at least you'll have a plan and you'll have, um, you know, you'll have some type of properly budgeted for the summer months. Um, and then the part three is, and I'm gonna talk about this a little bit later in the presentation, but we want you to briefly describe how the SAU is and the school will develop and implement a targeted support and improvement plan to improve student outcomes based on Maine's model school support. Um, ATSI or tier one plan uh, must identify and address resource inequities, including the use of evidence-based interventions and be monitored by the SAU on a continuous basis. That's directly from the statute. So yes, you are, you don't have to do the SIG application anymore, but you do need to keep um, on site your, and you need to have your own continuous improvement plan that's based on the tier one status. The good thing is you guys have already started this work and you can just continue the work because you've already started it with your SIG application. You already have a strategic plan. You already have SMART goals. You already have strategies and activities and you already have a CNA and school-wide plan. So you're just gonna continue that work um, as long as it meets um, the ATSI requirements. And I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that. Uh, and then the last part is just part four, which is this part, um, some monitoring and performance report assurances. So even though your money or the funding and the tier status is going away, you, um, you still need to comply with all of the monitoring and performance requirements uh, for FY22, FY23 and FY24. I don't think we're going to do anything with FY22, but we're definitely going to do something with FY23. Um, and if you do choose to um, release some of your SIG funds back to the department, you just want to check that, that you're um, aware of that or you're signing off on that, and that the SAU and school will comply with um, the Section 111 of regarding additional targeted support and improvement. And you'll just have the superintendent and the principal of the exiting school uh, sign off on that. Um, I know there's probably going to be questions on this. So um, just so we can get through the rest of this presentation, I was hoping the bulk of this timer would be for questions. So I'm going to keep moving along and then there should be plenty of time for questions if you have any on this or any other part of the presentation. So tier one ATSI plans, there are requirements. And I mentioned those briefly in that, but here's the statutory requirement in here. Um, it says you have to have a plan described in subpart paragraph B, which is the next slide, um, but you have to do an identify resource inequities. And I know this is an area that is really um, a little bit vague for a lot of schools and we're still trying to work on it. So hopefully we'll be able to provide some more resources for you for that, or at least some questions to ask of your schools um, and that, what your plan has needs to address the areas that got the school identified for tier one. Um, so your plan, and also needs to address the resource inequity. Sorry, I jumped ahead of slide. But you guys are used to this because your SIG application had the same components to that. You had to identify resource inequities and then your plan had to address those identified resource inequities. So none of this is new. It's just um, a little bit, um, it's just a continuation of it. And then this is that section 111D to B, which actually outlines what's supposed to be included in the plan. Again, none of this is new for you because this was all what was part of the SIG application. 
But what's different this piece is that when you were tier three, all your student populations were experiencing challenges. But with tier one, it's at least one. So it may not be all of them. But hopefully you'll spend some time um, looking at your student profiles and keep working on your data or reviewing your data. And then just kind of a summary, try to summarize it. Um, the school must develop a plan that is reviewed and approved by the school um, and SAU that is developed in partnership with stakeholders and is informed by all indicators in the main state accountability system, which means whatever you are identified for, your plan should address that and then include one or more evidence-based interventions. The, um, and like I said, the CNA and the school-wide plan that you've already used for your tier three school improvement strategic plan and SIG application can be used to, you can just continue the use of that. And then again, at this point, no documentation will be sent to the department or to me, except for this exit plan. Um, you'll just keep all that at the school site. And if we ask or request that information, you'll just be able to provide it. So if we say, hey, can you give us a copy of your tier one ATSI plan? You'd be able to do that, but we're not gonna ask you for to submit it um, for this. I think that's it for that piece. And then just real quickly, I'm not trying to give everybody a heads up about monitoring and performance reports. So in the past, SIG funds haven't really been monitored um, for a variety of reasons, but we are expected to monitor SIG funds. So giving everyone a heads up that SIG will be included in the FY25 ESCA monitoring. We're gonna try to embed it um, in ESCA. So uh, it is a good idea to doc keep all your documents in case your SAU is monitored for FY25 and you'll be able to provide all that information. And again, this is a, this is the requirements for comprehensive school um, improvement. So you wanna keep track of all that documentation. I'd say that some of the major policies that you're gonna to need to keep track of are your travel policy, which I think all districts already have. You wanna make sure that you, if you hired any consultants, that that's part of your procurement policy and that it meets, um, it meets the requirement over here. Um, use a rigorous review process. And we talked all about this in January during the tier three principal meeting, but I just wanted to throw it up there because again, SIG funds typically have not been a part of ESCA monitoring, but they will be for FY25. And then school profiles. Um, in the letter that you guys were sent or in the email notification you were sent regarding your exit status, we did provide well, we did provide a website for you to go on and view your school profile. Means Model School Supports is a tab on the ESSA dashboard. If you click on that right now, it has last year's school profile, um, but the letter that we sent to you should have um, access to the 23-24 school profile, which has the 22-23 uh, data which that data is in the state assessment um, tab here. So that data is what was used to, inf to create the school profiles. And I just wanted to quickly go through the school profile. Um, they're a little bit different this year. We added a couple more features. The school profile is there. We added the end count. I think we had that there last year. We've added graphs and we've added achievement goals um, so that you can kind of keep track of that. Now, this next slide, I know it looks like it's been annotated to death, but I wanted to show why this school exited tier three status, but is still, still tier one status. So if you I kind of tried to put all these lines in here, but not all of the student or all the student groups or sorry, student populations um, met tier three status. So the ones that are highlighted in blue, those are the ones that are tier one. And the one that's not, was not, did not meet, um, they they didn't meet the tier three requirements. So out of the four, five populations, three were what, it, what got this school um, identified for tier one, but because not all populations are experiencing um, 
uh, challenges, that's what got them exited from tier three status. Hopefully that is simple. It probably confused everybody, but it also is important to go down here and look at the, um, the formula because it's attendance and, and then these two together or this. So you could have met it, you could have met it for um, literacy as far as ELA, but if you didn't meet it for math, then that would have kicked you into uh, being identified. So I try to keep this as simple as possible, but I'm sure there'll be questions that you guys can ask me in a few minutes because I think I'm almost done. Um, and then here's the end count. This is just to give you an idea of how many uh, students participated in the assessment. And that's the graph to kind of tell you, this is just a screenshot. So there's more to this. I just took a real quick screenshot um, based on the indicators across um, the student or the population groups. And then achievement goals. This is new. We added this so that you can see where you're expected to go with the growth. So the baseline year is 2023, um, and this is the proficiency. And then 2024 is um, right now. Um, and then actually, you know, the 2024 goal would be next year. Yeah, because we're kind of always a year left behind. And then you can just see across. So when I said that you're the next opportunity for um, for these schools to exit tier one status is going to be in the fall of 2027. So you'll this is where you need to be if you don't want to get identified for tier three or tier two. So depending on um, where you're on that and. As we get closer to this, and we're still working all this out because it's a different kind of a model. It's been um, updated and amended a couple of times. So this is something that you might want to look at because what we were talking about is we tell schools that we, you know, if you don't, if you're not meeting certain criteria, but now you know what they are. And I also want to put a caveat in here that uh, the 23 was a baseline, and we had to do some, we had to have a baseline. So the baseline right now for um, progress is actually the state average. From next year on, it's actually based on your school's data. So it's going to be different for every school because it's going to be based on where you are and the trajectory over seven years to get where you need to get. So it's it's outlined in our in the uh, state accountability plan, and um, I don't think that plan's on the website yet, but we'll make sure it's on there if you want to read into the the mathematical part of it. And then that's it. So now we just have the resources page, uh, our contact information, and then how to connect with the DOE. And I'm going to stop recording at this point and answer any questions that you may have.